When Into the Dalek first aired, I remember a lot of people were quick to point out its thematic similarities with Dalek from 2005, with the general consensus being that it's basically just that story again, but not quite as well done. Now, if unoriginality was all that this episode had going against it, then I probably wouldn't be here making this video right now. But nevertheless, here I am, and that fact alone should tell you that things are a bit more complicated. The episode opens with the Doctor saving a resistance fighter, Journey Blue, moments before her craft gets destroyed by an army of Daleks, and immediately I have a problem. The Doctor's bedside manner may not have always been the best at times, but the way he addresses Journey and talks down to her after rescuing her is beyond cold. It's downright insensitive considering she has just lost her brother and is traumatised. Granted, there is probably an ulterior reason for him behaving so condescendingly, but we'll be coming back to that later. Clara, meanwhile, meets Danny Ping, a former soldier now working at Cole Hill school and asks him out on a date. Random side note, but what is it with ex-military figures becoming maths teachers in the Doctor Who universe? Anyway, I've seen many complain that Clara and Danny don't share any chemistry, and from this episode at least, I completely get it. It's not just that the actors have no chemistry, but the script gives them nothing to work with. They share a single conversation with each other in which Clara manages to trigger Danny's trauma over his past with some quips about teaching kids to shoot people, which feel very contrived and out of nowhere, and somehow from this one all awkward, clunky interaction, Danny decides he wants to go out with her. Nothing whatsoever about it feels natural or earned. But as it happens, Clara gets interrupted before she can go out on her date by the Doctor, who has been recruited to go inside of a malfunctioning Dalek imprisoned on board the Rebel ship, hence the title of the episode. And when I say a malfunctioning Dalek, what it actually means is the Dalek, whom the Doctor nicknames Rusty, has turned quote-unquote good and believes all other Daleks must die. As a premise, this is pretty intriguing, but as ever, it's what you do with it that counts and this is where we start to get into the deeper themes of the story. So after some misadventures inside of the Dalek casing, the Doctor is able to repair the damage to Rusty, inadvertently causing the Dalek to revert back to its normal behaviour as it breaks free and starts slaughtering the occupants of the Rebel ship. The Doctor firstly attempts to rectify the situation by having Clara restore the Dalek's repressed memories, and I'm not too fond of this. It points to the idea that a Dalek's hatred comes from the casings as opposed to the bubbly creatures inside, which kind of undermines the whole point of the Daleks. It's not too bad here, but this notion would really its ugly head again in The Witch's Familiar in a notorious scene, which Mr. Tardis has already torn into multiple times for this exact reason. I'll put the link up on screen now. The Doctor then melts his own mind with Rusty in a last-ditch attempt to make the Dalek turn good again, and is dismayed when, instead of seeing the beauty of the universe through the Doctor's eyes, it sees his hatred of the Daleks and latches onto that. Now, this is the part of the episode which gets seen as a rip-off of Dalek, and purely on a surface level, I can see why. I mean, Stephen Moffat practically lifts some of the the dialogue right out of Rob Sheeman's script. You would make a good Dalek. You are a good Dalek. However, upon conducting a deeper examination of the themes, taking context into consideration, it turns out things are not quite that simple, and to explain why, we're going to take a brief trip back into 2005. See, when Russell T Davies was first looking at bringing Doctor Who back onto our screens, he was faced with a problem. That problem being that Doctor Who was still thought of as that campy British sci-fi show with shoddy effects and monsters that no one really wanted to admit to being a fan of. Notably, this reputation also extended to the show's flagship antagonist, the Dalek who are probably subject to the most ridicule of all with their tin pot appearance and supposed inability to climb stairs. It's no coincidence that when Rob Shearman came to write the script for Dalek, he was given explicit instructions to take every aspect of the Daleks that had been made fun of and turn it into something scary. However, part of the problem was not just with the Daleks themselves, but with the Doctor's flippant attitude towards the antagonist through much of the classic era. And to be clear, the Doctor having this attitude when faced with danger is completely in character. In fact, it's something which J.A he cites as a core aspect of the Doctor's personality in her five-hour-long epic about the failings of the Chibnall era. The segment in question starts about three and a half hours in, FYI. Russell T Davies' ingenious solution, therefore, was the invention of the Time War. By having the Doctor be riddled with regret and PTSD from what they've been through, it justifies them having such a strong reaction to seeing a Dalek again for the first time. The result is a scene that is not particularly Doctorly, but in its context, it works as a way of selling the Dalek to the audience as a serious threat. Now, why do I bring all of this up? Because on its own, the central thematic crux of both Dalek and Into the Dalek, that the 
the Doctor's hatred in some way makes them no better than a Dalek is fundamentally flawed, and I'd even go as far as to say toxic. I highly recommend Lily Orchard's video on the problematic themes of Steven Universe's further reading on this subject, and I'll put the link up now. But to spell it out loud and clear for all those in the back, hating and retaliating against Nazis does not make you yourself a Nazi. Such mentality is primarily a gaslighting technique that is only ever perpetuated by sanctimonious white splainers who have no knowledge of what it's like to be oppressed, or worse, by the oppressors themselves. The thing is, though, that's not really what Dalek is all about, is it? Sure, the Doctor may have internalised some of this ideology, but over the course of the episode, he has proven to be completely justified in his reaction, and had he initially succeeded in killing the Dalek before Van Staten intervened, then nobody on the base would have died. Rose's naivety, by direct contrast, is what allows the Dalek to escape and slaughter loads of people, almost resulting in her own death. The main point of the episode is not to show that the Doctor is right or wrong for hating a Dalek, but merely to illustrate just how scarred and deeply traumatised he is by the events of the Time War. Now, remember how in my Series 8 overview I said how the Doctor's arc in the series suffers from poor timing? Well, Into the Dalek is a textbook example of that. From the audience's perspective, the Doctor only just recently saved Gallifrey, and so not only is it a lesser retelling of Dalek, but crucially, it lacks all of the context I've just described that made that episode's themes workable in the first place. Without said context, all you're really left with is a Doctor being needlessly angsty and melodramatic, and a message with terrible implications that is an actual form of gaslighting. To top it all off, the episode ends on a rather strange note as Journey Blue wishes to join the TARDIS team, but the Doctor refuses her because apparently he has a dislike of soldiers. Well, I guess that explains his callous behaviour toward her earlier on, but it's still a weird and out-of-character prejudice for the Doctor to have, especially when he admits himself that she has good qualities, like kindness and bravery. I sure do hope this thread doesn't get picked up on again in a later episode now that Clara is dating a soldier. That was foreshadowing in case you weren't aware. I'm not going to review every episode of Series 8, which isn't to say I won't ever come back and revisit the ones I missed at a later date, but for now I just want to stick to the episodes I have most to say about. And what is there to say really about a story like Robot of Sherwood? It's just a typical Mark Gatiss filler type episode that delivers exactly what you expect it to. Not terrible, but nothing to write home about either. Though I do appreciate how the Doctor basically gets a clip around the ear for projecting his own angsty cynicism and self-loathing complex onto Robin Hood. Anyway, Next time we're going to be skipping forward and picking up with Time Heist. But for now, I'm Midnight, and I travel in time and space. And trains.